Hello everyone. The title of today's episode is Multidimensional Self-Acknowledgement. The reason why these ideas have come together to meet is to create a new setting of understanding. And in a sense, when man looks at the self, he is beginning to see new dimensions in how that self is situated to a novel experience. Because it seems we have considerations of our past, we are aware of physicality and of course a sense of subjectivity also. And as we are aware of this, we are beginning to see that if we bring our attention to what is existing right here, right now, there is a present phenomena before time and space could be considered to be present. And so there is a sense of self-acknowledgement which is self-reflective, but at the same time it's that moment where uh, even though you were looking in the mirror and you saw your reflection simultaneously, at that moment you also knew you weren't just in that reflection. You know, you were, you were aware of where you were standing. And it's that moment where many gurus and mystics and yogis have come and told people, guys, you're not the reflection in the mirror, so stop trying to chase the mirror and see that you can't really get what's in the mirror, you know. It's a reflection. Rather, begin to see what is situated here before you even try to see if there's a reflection or not. Try to see if you know uh, uh, your dimensions of experience. And of course, when I say that, that means you know yourself to the degree that you can understand yourself uh, very newly by just observing how you understood things before. So the phenomena that happens when new information comes into the human experience is that that human experience reshapes itself based on how that form is. And so what that means is we, as, as the beings that we are, have a very integrated and fractal uh, uh, sense of mind. What that means is the senses, even though we are individualizing them like our fingers, but it's as if there is a palm here and all of our sensory perception is kept here by a greater holistic phenomenon that is just uh, taking this chaotic coagulation and giving it order, which is becoming our thought of, gosh, what should I order in this restaurant? Do you know there's, there's a very huge sense of uh, observance of the manifest world that is that is the intelligence you know now we as an individual are understanding this but our self acknowledgement sometimes take us beyond the dimensions which we thought we were limited in and what that means is uh, before we even get to concepts of people trying to visualize what the soul is or the spirit is or try to understand it first thing is uh, there is nothing before anything has been said. So the first, some of the first beginning truths of life is the silence and stillness of being, how things already exist. Then you become aware of your existence and how that is working in this life and then more, fr uh, more solidified frameworks come. But you begin to see it's not that you're fully solid. It's not that the only things are objective. There's always room to grow. And so what that means is evolution is happening because the nature of the plane is multidimensional. That's why there is a movement into new states of consciousness. So what that means is many people are saying, wow, the ape suddenly learned how to stand on its two feet, and bam, new consciousness. But not a lot of people are, are seeing the fact that it has nothing to do with the ape, but rather how Every word I am communicating right now and every decision made by the human phenomena is natural expression. In nature, we are always peace for the transitions do not create uh, dichotomies and worlds of duality in which we begin to see suddenly like, oh my God, if this decision is going to lead me to hell and this one's going to lead me to heaven, what kind of thinking is that? Your state of being is one which is aware of ideology and then based on 
Your presence, your moment will navigate into what your ideology is steering your attention to. What that means is your attention is your hand, uh, uh, is the hand of the pilot on the wheel. The captain of the ship has suddenly taken the command. You know, it's, it's very important because many of us think we are powerless, many of us think we're stuck in dynamics, many people see suffering, but if you look at suffering, there's a creative aspect to man's mind that can really, in a very <laughs> random manner, create worlds. What that means is there are many times that we think kids don't have profound thoughts, but Sometimes you as an adult, if, if you suddenly go into deep self-contemplation, go in nature and sit still and silent and just observe your presence, you begin to see, gosh, so many of your existential truths that you are clearly understanding now, you also understood then and it's kind of like you knew. If you become really existentially sensitive, you are not looking for interpretation. You are looking at nothing other than the awareness of thing. What that means is it's not about what is your object of meditation. It's not, it doesn't matter if you choose to look at that book and make it more real for yourself or look at that idea and make it more real for yourself or look at that idea and make it more for yourself or whether you want to just constantly you know, change the ideas and bash. And, you know, there's many different ways. To, there are many mind games. And that is why the body, if we only associate to be the body, we become servants of our own choosing. But if you see how the body is present in an intelligence that man is very like, just very, very just playfully saying, oh, it's a mind, I don't know what it is, but it's my mind, you know. You begin to see there is a very huge suggestion there. Because if you are a body that has a mind, that, that implies that this reality is too fixed to be changed. You are governed by external uh, regulations. However, if man begins to see that choice never had a choice, there will come a core existential movement as if you are fa you've just found the elevator to go into the center of the earth. And as you do, you see there is no center. For the minute you shift out of the proximity of the objects you're aware of, your intelligence is changed. What that means is when you hold a Bible in your hand, you will feel uh, very religious. But if you've just been, have, have, if you had work and you've suddenly gone on a business trip on somewhere, suddenly you'd suddenly see, gosh, oh, and you'd, you'd create guilt based on thinking that, gosh, I didn't do that action, do you know? But at the same time, you are making that action real. You are making this moment valuable. You are receiving my words and in a sense seeing what, the, what, <laughs> what this guy is saying, you know? And what this guy is saying is fine, Mr. Within. And of course, this is a very abstract concept, but what it means is become aware of that which is here and that which is innately present. Because if externality is an internal phenomena, your world never was dualistic. When you see that there was a mind and a body was a projection in it, objectivity breaks. It's as if the minute one human being uh, understood, saw, got an eternal glance, all human beings were like, whoa, he saw something and they just knew. You know? <laughs> and of course the Buddha, must have understood, perhaps, that as he sat down by that tree, there was nothing to do. It's as if every act externally is suggesting a sense of comparison, which is the nature of the mind, which is a karmic phenomenon. So what that means is we, as consciousness, we, as existential intelligence and divine attention, are untouched. We are never flawed. But the machine is evolving and so the machine is flawed in how it constantly chooses to keep itself. It's not that perhaps human beings are lost into a certain dimension where they cannot evolve. It's, it, 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 it is at times they are in a 
we are in a world that its reality is really found through self-acknowledgement, but self-acknowledgement takes you beyond your dimensions. And so there's a reason that Yogi sat in the cave in the Himalayas to move beyond his dimensions of how thought was creating meaning. When I say thought is creating meaning, that means there's one way of you looking at how, what this life means, which is you thinking and literally words come into play, the meanings and definitions and words and language and just how you know how to explain something comes into it. But then there's a way of where you can understand the meaning of life, which is without taking a step. It is seeking instant knowledge rather than a knowledge that was caused somewhere and the effect is God knows where. <laughs> Gosh, the effect is unified field knows where, you know. <laughs> it's very important for us to <clears throat> walk with the elegance of a divinity that is divine, not based on uh, a story and a character that's in it, but rather the intelligence of the storyteller that even the storyteller didn't know, but it's the words were communicating. Or just going where they needed to go. We give life to the worlds that become real for us. And what that means is that you, whoever you are, are living here. And as you're living here, you are having a moment of experience, a moment of being. And before we even get to the human idea of who, who you are and what the person does and what not, you are just a moment of being. As you ground yourself in this knowing, you will see it's very funny because the spiritual, many spiritual seekers uh, are not spiritual seekers. They are not actual spiritual seekers uh, until they begin to see how they have been putting a story when there was no character, you know? They have been putting the environment, the, how the world is, when there was no character. There was never someone saying, you had to be this. But our interpretation through what is manifest in our experience suggests how we look at the world beyond. What that means is we can all acknowledge that regardless of an afterlife, there is a moment of conscious awareness. So there's every human being who has confronted, who have transitioned, has, has been expanding the human uh, experience to greater realms of abstraction. Death is for the human idea. If it was the cosmos looking at it, <laughs> it would just be how it, how it, how it gets along, how, how work gets done here. <laughs> So what that means is the phenomena, the expression of your world is how work gets done here in this universal sector. <laughs> now, to continue with a sense of a strict view, Mr. Within would like to talk about certain disciplinary actions or certain practical views that a human being can approach in regards to having more of an understanding of multi-dimensional self-acknowledgement. First thing you need to understand is no one in this external, your plane, no one in this world is asking you anything unless you choose to open your eyes to it. It's very important to understand this. What that means is it doesn't matter how much someone comes and says to you, it doesn't matter how much someone comes and gives you the abundance you're seeking for, if it's not real for you, you're not going to receive anything of that creation. What that means is if you're sitting somewhere and let's say someone is talking in a social gathering and you can have a decision of consciously choosing to listen to that person and just not having a conscious view and if you don't have a conscious view, you see nothing will happen. It's just that you will not absorb the expression that is happening around you. What that means is when, when your alarm clock is, is, is being, when your alarm clock in the morning is being, uh, is ringing, if you throw a sweater over it, you know, without getting out of your bed, you are lessening the alarm sound. <laughs> but at the same time, a better method was to have the phone with you beside you. <laughs> In airplane mode, of course. 
reality then, as you consciously view information, begins to change. What that means is, you know how when you talk to a human, when you talk to someone, the way you communicate suggests how they will respond to you? So what that means is how you behave suggests how someone else will receive your behavior, how you will be a sense of self in their reality. Not that you, are, you, are, you, they, you can choose how they see you, but they will see you based on what's in front of them. And what that means is how you acknowledge ideas suggests how you enter into the world that that idea can open for you. So by consciously listening, you don't just need to have your attention on the teacher, you need to adjust your moment of experience to recognize that, damn, the reason I need to listen to that teacher <clears throat> It's because this is the newest thing that's happening in my moment of experience and in my proximity and sphere of awareness. Let me see what this new phenomenon of expression uh, gives you, you know? And what that means is when I say give you, it's not that you are trying to look for something in a sense, it's just that you're trying to observe. Observance, the beautiful thing about it is that it can be selfless. What that means is that moment when you're sitting alone in the park and just looking at the life around you, the nature, the people, you know, you're seeing nothing wrong. Because the minute you become still, you become aware of the movement of the natural world and you become more compassionate. But if you're constantly moving and you're also having the system of, uh, and we think it's actually accurate, but it's not, trying to create a linearity in which we have coordination, uh, coordinate systems in regards to having references of experience. So what that means is based on how you were in many of your memories, which is a simultaneous awareness you have right now, your acknowledgement is not linear. Human thought, its origination is not linear. It's just that in a certain range of self-awareness, we're saying, oh, this is what this means. You know, but after that, it's beyond the human experience. So we need to acknowledge uh, the human being more than just ha the objectivity the human idea suggests. You know, the human experimentation suggests, the human apprentice suggests, and to recognize that the being is beyond the apprentice. And this is where the scientist goes and, oh my God, Maybe I should read a philosophy. <laughs> and suddenly sees that it, it doesn't have to be so serious because your attention, just like the lens of a camera, is suggesting how much the reality is there. And so there are certain regulations because just like how man sees there's a certain observer effect in which something looks in a certain way, every form, every shape in this reality is also being kept by the observance of a greater being. So now it is time for the human, uh, uh, the human experience to directly go into this absolute reality. And what that means is, it's a very exciting time. That means it's like we, for, we were acknowledging the human being, that, that pretty much man was acknowledging himself wrong for a while. Now he's like, gosh, I, I, you know, I, I didn't have to take it so hard. You know, <laughs> It's like the caveman, uh, uh, which even, trust me, there is a sense of collective being in regards to time and space, which is phenomenal. But that's, of course, for another talk. Um, Anyways, not to <laughs> uh, be caught by a shooting star, man is a realization beyond time and space. That means that is where you realize are. Now, multidimensionality is something that it has layers in regards to how you are acknowledging uh, not ideas and thoughts and beliefs. So it's not that you're interpreting, trying to uh, judge my voice right now or trying to understand what I'm saying. Rather you, just as a being here, becoming aware how my voice is a phenomena in your moment of experience and your body is also a phenomena, but you are in holistic observance that selflessly has been the flight of how the plane of existence, regardless of its turbulence, has transcended beyond. And so this is where the observer effect turns man only to one result.
to trust the immediate uh, uh, phenomena that is there. Because when there's aspects of non-linear expression, that means we don't understand how that intelligence worked because it was like beyond logical thinking, let's say. We need to see that that irrationality is our greatest teacher. Those insane, insane people we condemn and we judge are our greatest teacher. That person who we get mad at is the one telling us, yo man, become aware of your state of being. Become aware of your human communication. For every enemy that has stood in front of you has been your brother in keeping the polarities of your, of your projection of reality. And it's very important to see that there's nothing here opposing you, but there is at the same time nothing here having to support you. And so this is of course a very important thing because many human beings become family oriented and become oriented in ways where their desires are just things they've, they're like, gosh, I was raised in this way, so I must behave in this way, you know? But at the same time, you must see that behavior is also given that moment of free will in which novelty can be always a new introduction. So your ability right now is not to, in a sense, try to uh, enhance a failing sense of identity, one that is lost in an illusion or in a prison world, as some people say, you know, it's crazy. <laughs> or some kind of proje holographic projection. These things are in interesting words, but they are not getting you there. What needs to get you there is your practical application of all that you know to all that you don't know. And so you see that is expression. On one level, we, we, have, we create fear. On another level, existence never even, you know, talked to create worlds of language, you know? It's a, the silence was there. It's just our attention is on forms that are suggesting the formless is not there, but that's impossible. Every instant of your being is a moment where you are aware of your real eyes. It is a sense of being beyond cages that were never here. And of course, your clarity, and for many, the passage through their karma, is their ability to accept all that is here and to accept all that is their awareness. All that, you know, not just the things that are in your awareness, all that you are aware of. What that means is that moment you were sitting in the park, absolute being, just being a moment of existence. You're here, you're present. And then you see, you're not just being a moment of existence, you are being a profound observance. Suddenly you see, you're not just becoming aware of the movements of the birds and the branches uh, in the distance, but at the same time, it seems as if there's this subtler wind. And you're becoming aware of these details in your thought, thinking, all that you did and all that you have done, and what needs to be done, and how it's all going to what? To here, to the experience which is what is keeping you. And so as man takes his steps beyond locality, it was never man but that transcendent state of evolved consciousness that had always Hold man up. Inspiration is the voice of evolution trying to shake things up. Multidimensional self acknowledgement is absolute experience and the trust in all expression. This is not just trusting external expression. It's not that you just have to uh, avoid things and not think that you have to, you just suddenly start being a yes man character. It, it means that you recognize that this life process needs a sincerity that thinks more than accumulation, more than recollection. What that means is you want to be interested in now, not what you're going to do later, because what you're going to do later is based on the quality of your work now. 
And so this is, it's very important to have this practice of making a mirror your greatest boss. Because at the end of it, when the mirror has broken, you will see who stands. Absolute being, absolute experience. And of course, <laughs> perhaps a decent paycheck that was never in currency. Understand that in this reality, you are beyond definition. And an empty page could never lie about the clarity of what is written. Your knowing is your greatest gift of experience. For temporal death only created the excitement for eternal life. You belong to the voice of the cosmos. The echo had never begun. <laughs> yeah. And of course, always bask with an existential compassion and have the humility of the explorer that didn't want anything from just one projection of reality but wanted to explore all projection and so your greatest project <laughs> is your awareness I wrote down a quote earlier I would like to share. And that is simply non existence is the practice of existence. I hope that you see self-remembrance and self-awareness as your duty. You are given wings, but you must discover how to fly. And that is what is living. You are flying into new states of consciousness, new states of awareness to dimension, new states of simultaneous acknowledgement for a paradox was always a prophet among lost words. Your collective never needed your individual to know, but when you could, that is the divinity. In which manifestation is formed out of. For a white lion's roar will sound intense up close, but in the distance, there's still many who question themselves 
And so mankind's greatest act is to shift this. We want to make human communication become the most exciting and compassionate act. All wars shall be with ideology that creates beliefs for madmen to sign declarations that never declared anything. Of course, these madmen are simply human beings. And so, as humanity, you are never punished for being human. But as an individual, there are many realms of judgment that one may choose to keep for themselves. But, you know, you don't need to have your backpack filled with the rocks and have, the, have it you know, on when walking. <laughs> You can just take it off. And so reality will be more than the weight of rubble. <clears throat> also, a quick note, in regards to multidimensional self-acknowledgement, uh, you will kind of find the phenomena of intuition to become a door in which your trust will be a greater revelation. So multidimensionality cannot be actualized consciously in your experience unless you trust the experiencer, you trust your whole moment of being and so that is when for the human communicator the communication becomes of course more advanced because the observance is realizing that the body never had a mind but when the mind stood still it seemed that there was life in non-existence. Even though there are many barriers and blocks in this life, life is not a Tetris game. <laughs> there is no game that needs to be over but rather for the player to see that there is something more than the game. What that means is just like how there's footballers there, you know, we have footballers, you know, soccer players who they're playing a game and they go shake hands, you know, and they, they have, we have a winner or a loser, but at the end of it, we all acknowledge it was just a game. There are certain beings who acknowledge the fabric of reality like that. And these, these are mystic footballers, I guess. <laughs> because they are, they're in a sense seeing how ideology is its own mask. Untouched, your breath has always been multidimensional. And simultaneous realities meant the individuality was also there and present. For the candle, greatness is its illumination. Not the drops of wax that could not see. The profoundity of consciousness in the ocean of love. As all ideas fade, life Stood up. Now. 
much blessings and namaste.